Welcome to Cherry Road TV. I'm Ian McNay and I'm sitting here with our Director of Catalogue, John Reed. Hello. Hi, John. Hi. So what we thought we would do is have a new series where we talk in a little bit more detail about the box sets we put out, each individual box set, because there's a lot of thought and a lot of work goes into each box set release. And John is kind of our king of box sets and has been putting them together now for many, many years. So what was your first box set for Trey Red, John? I'm glad you asked that, Ian. Um, my first box set was in 2011, and it was a 60s mod box called Looking Back. And since then, we haven't looked back, see? <laughs> and so we've done a multitude of genres, different formats, and most of it started with us looking at stuff we owned or represented and trying to be creative with it, really. And all the little tracks that get lost in any catalogue. They yeah. need to try and find a home and tell a story, stitched it all together. That's always been the, the approach. And that's what we always say, don't we? Every box set in its own way tells a story. Yes, absolutely, yeah. And hopefully one that people like to buy. <laughs> so. Yeah. So the first one we're going to talk about here is 1977, the year punk broke. Now, of course, when I looked at the track listing originally, I thought, this is not just a punk box set because there's things on here that definitely aren't punk so what was your thinking behind this um well i think that first of all we had done a couple of compilations or box sets based around the late 70s punk scene so we did action time vision uh, which was a four cd that was well received a couple of years ago we did one called to the outside of everything which focused more on the post-punk side of things and and a number of other releases as well. But we'd done a series of 60s based year by year compilations where we took the, an idea of say psychedelia, but were fairly loose about what that might be. And, and they just seemed to be really well received. And, and, and equally with the indie scene, we did C86, 7, 8, 9. People loved those year by year things. And I just thought, why don't we try it with the punk era and the idea was to start with 77, of course, because that's sort of sort of year zero. And the year punk broke is a, a playful homage to the film that came out, you know, the, in the American film of Sonic Youth and so on, where for them, punk breaks in the early 90s with the grunge scene. So I thought, well, that's nice. And also because although it has the word punk, which is a nice hook to hang it on, we thought, well, this time, don't with Action Time Vision, it was very specifically punk or independent punk. This time we could be a lot broader and more playful. So we'd have pub, pub rock, new wave, anything that felt like it was part of that new thing that was happening in 77. So yeah. Mo Motorhead are on there, for example, Graham Park and Rumour, but still some of the big, big hitters as well. Because it was really kind of 76 when punk first started to become a bit more public, people knew about it. Um, and then 77, there was some great releases and you start here with the Buscock's boredom and we had the Stranglers, Gorillas, the, the damn neat, neat, neat. Um, the Vibrators, Bad Time, The Boys Don't Care. These are all the jam actually on here, away from the numbers. These are all classic tracks, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, all the box sets try to have a mix of familiar names. So you could argue that Away From The Numbers is not the best known track by the jam. So it's an album track, always been a favorite with jam fans. Equally, Neatly and Neat by The Damned has been on many compilations, but never a cherry red one. So you try and have a few classics, a few big name bands. I mean, the Stranglers track is a, the B side of their first single. So you just mix it up, just whatever feels right, really. So that overall, the, the sense is that there's enough familiar stuff to keep you, you know, engaged. And it's not just complete, because I think if you had four hours of songs, tracks you've never heard before. It's too much. Four hours of tracks you know for too, all too well, that doesn't work either. What you want is some kind of combination of the two, which is an, an inexact science, obviously. But it's a good way of, for us, of course, to use a lot of tracks that we have in the catalogue, which we couldn't find a home for. Because discovery is key to you, isn't it? As you're saying, you like to have tracks that people don't know, and I'm just looking here. What, what, for all of us who work on these, that's part of the fun of it, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of, it motivates you to find these tracks that fit 
which you didn't know very well before, or didn't even know at all before. Like you've got yeah. cilia and the mutations on here that I didn't, I didn't. Yeah, know. funny enough, we cleared that for harmony in my head, which was I forgot to mention that was one we did previously. That was more the the lighter end, the power pop and new wave end, but that cleared just too late. So we knew that we could clear that from Warner Brothers. Uh, so we thought we'd include that, which is the Stranglers in disguise, essentially. So, um, so you get a lot of these tracks that collectors have known about for years. Some things that we didn't know about that we just find. There's one track on there which we acquired the rights to a few years ago, which is a cover of You Really Got Me, the Kinks classic, by a band called Chartreuse, which might be the least punk-sounding band name ever. But then it transpired that was they were ex-members of Cockney Rebel. So again, and although we're saying punk is year zero or implying that, of course, a lot of the people on this box set, as, as with the punk scene generally, had this secret history. They'd all been in bands before. They just didn't admit to it. So we found a few tracks by bands where, again, they've been forgotten, uh, but we were able to put them on CD for the first time. There was also a fantastic book dedicated to 1977 that we, we used as a reference point, and that Chartreuse single was in there. So, so what else is on this box set which is kind of pretty rare and people probably wouldn't have heard of? Um, well, there's things like the novelty single by Norman the Hooligans, I'm a Punk, which is the tr some novelty single that came at the end. Um, there's you've got Ned, you've got the Fruit Eating Bears. Yeah, there's some tracks towards the end of this three. You've got some tracks that are have only really been on very uber deep kind of rarity CDs, really. Yeah, there's quite. I'm just looking through it here again just to remind me, and there's quite a few bands like Trash, In The Method, Public Zone, Left Hand Drive that I... Left Hand Drive, again, weren't a punk band. They were kind of a, a rock band, really, who just uh, got inspired by that whole sort of slightly heavier sound that came through punk. And so, funnily enough, the guys from Left Hand Drive had been in a band previously that had been included on a, an earlier box set dedicated to early 70s kind of Black Sabbath sound alikes. So a lot of these people... Um, there's another band called the Fruit Eating Bears, and yes. Neville from the band. Again, he'd been in an early 70s band. So, so a lot of these groups we already were in touch with, and some of the tracks have been on CD before, but also on specialist reissue labels like Overground and uh, Detour, where they sell I don't know, 500 to 1,000 copies. So, so for us, we're giving wider exposure to tracks that have very much been in that, that sort of niche uh, collector's domain. And how do you actually decide the track listing? It's, it's a fudge, really. I mean, that one is... We looked at whether... The, a lot of them are, are chronological. So we, we try and tell a story across the year. And with that box set, it worked really well to stick to essentially the chronology of the way the records were released originally. Because you do get a lot of the most accessible and biggest tracks coming out in the early part of the year. And to start with Boredom by the Buzzcocks, feels very poignant because obviously Pete Shelley died this year. And that's the opening track on Spiral Scratch, which is the, you know, widely heralded and rightly so, the kind of first independent punk record and really opened the floodgates for that whole scene. So although the box set is not devoted just to independent records, that's such a landmark single. So that felt right. But then you do get the Stranglers, as you said, the Damned, the Jam, all those key bands early in the story. Whereas a lot of the bands who are more obscure, who came along at the tail end of the year, are sort of tucked away on disc, disc three, which is more for the collectors. So it just kind of, it works as a story by sticking to it chronologically. But some of the box sets we do, we don't. We just sequence them how it feels right, really. Again, a mix of the familiar and the obscure. I think not everybody realises it's a lot of work, isn't it, putting these together? Because you've got, first of all, the, I, the idea which starts to generate more ideas of who you might use. Then you have to clear all the tracks. You have to get license the tracks. Yes, so you do. You get these periods of kind of high, a sort of burst of activity initially, where we compile something rough. We then go to licensing normally with the major record companies, and that can take three to six months. So one of the challenges is to come back to the project after you've got a critical mass of clearances, and then sort of re-energize yourself, remind yourself of what you were thinking six months ago to kind of then get the project over the line. So that's one of the biggest challenges, yeah. Okay, John, well, thanks very much. So that's 1977, the, the year that punk broke. And we'll do a little sequence now showing you inside what's inside the box. Mm -hmm. 